What is up, Prove It Nation? Welcome. I am so excited for today's conversation. For those of you that don't know me, I am Dr. Ryan Lowry. And today I have one of the most incredible human beings and one of the smartest human beings I've ever met in my entire life here to introduce to you. But before I introduce to you, uh, Ben Azadi, I want to talk to you a little bit about his background. This guy is literally one of the most incredible human beings I've ever met. Besides being a genuine, good-hearted human being, which you know is at the core of Prove It, he is a four-time best-selling author. Many of you probably already know his book. You could, you could see it. It's Keto Flex, one of the best resources I've ever come across in my entire life in terms of just how to optimize health, right? Eating a lower carb ketogenic diet, but just overall strategies to optimize health. He's also written a book, which is re very relevant to today's conversation called the Intermittent Fasting Cheat Sheet. Uh, what, so he's been doing intermittent fasting ketosis before it was the cool kid on the block. And now he's here to talk to you all about ways to optimize it through ketosis, through intermittent fasting, and just overall health. So without further ado, Ben, welcome. Oh, Ryan, thanks for that intro. I'm excited to be here with you. And I really appreciate those words. You're, you've been a huge inspiration to me. So I'm grateful to be in this on this platform with Prove It Nation. Good to meet you all. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, brother. Some people call him the health detective. He is the Sherlock Holmes of health. Like he, <laughs> he solves and figures out everything. So this is going to be a great conversation. I'm excited for you all to tune into it. So Ben, first off, could you just give everyone a little background uh, about yourself? I know you've you've overcome health challenges yourself. You have family members that have inspired you. So kind of just give a little bit of background so everyone gets to know you a little bit better. For sure. So for many people out there who followed that standard American diet, which we know it's heavily processed, that was my story growing up here in, in Miami, Florida, where I currently live, born and raised, not too far from Ryan. I followed a standard American diet. I was pretty much left to my own devices with my parents kind of being divorced, my mom working three jobs. One of those jobs, by the way, was at a Kentucky Fried Chicken. So my mom brought me home Kentucky Fried Chicken, fried in our favorite seed oil of the day. And uh, I was very unhealthy growing up. I was physically obese, mentally obese, and I had really low self-esteem, self, low self-confidence. I wore t-shirts to the beach and to swimming pools. And that was my life growing up. I never focused on health and nutrition. I was very much unhealthy. I had bad addictive behaviors to drugs and video games and sugar and processed junk. And you know, this uh, transferred into my adulthood where I found myself back in 2008 being a 24-year-old obese man at 250 pounds, rock bottom, ready to give up on life. And thankfully, I didn't explore that route. I took ownership. I started to read books um, from Dr. Wayne Dyer, Bob Proctor, Tony Robbins, incredible people. And the books helped me take ownership. And I started to understand that, yeah, maybe my genetics might not be the best because my dad had di type 2 diabetes. He was obese. But I started to understand that I could control my genetics. I could do different things with my lifestyle that could express certain genes that I would want expressed and turn off genes that I want turned off. But it started with ownership. So I just started to move my body and eat better foods. And uh, nine months later, I went through this incredible health transformation. I lost 80 pounds in nine months. I went from 34% body fat down to 6% body fat. And I, I finally achieved this physical six pack that I always dreamed of, right, Ryan? This kid that was always bullied and picked on for being fat. I finally achieved this physical six pack, but most importantly, the mental six pack and what it did for my mental health. And that was 14 years ago. And along the way, of course, I discovered keto and fasting and all that. We'll get into that. But that was the starting point for me in 2008. That's incredible, man. Congratulations. That is thank you. So many uh, people experience similar journeys and everyone has their own story. And that is an incredible, incredible story of just how like I love the idea of the mental six pack over the, the physical six pack. Yeah. And that's what we're working on, right? How do we get mentally stronger in order to help us become better overall human beings, right? Um, so first question I have for you in, in general, because some people, this may be their first time hearing about ketones, ketosis, intermittent fasting. What, how would you define or what is ketosis? Yeah, we have a similar defini definition to it. First, let's define what mainstream says about keto. They're going to tell you keto is dangerous. It's a ketoacidosis, which is very different than a metabolic process, which is ketosis. So that's my definition, a metabolic process, right? Not necessarily 
a diet, but a metabolic process that every single human being is hardwired to use. We have lost this ability, especially here in America, where we're now burning sugar instead of burning fat. And that creates a lot of problems, insulin resistance, diabetes, cancer, et cetera. The fact of the matter is if they could put ketosis into uh, a pill in, in terms of medication, they would be all over it, but they can't do that. So the, you could put it into exogenous ketones, which is super cool. And you could teach your body to do it, which is super cool, but you can't put it into medication. That's why they say it's dangerous. So every single one of our ancestors did keto. That is a fact because they didn't have food available all the time. And thank God for the process of ketosis because they started to burn body fat and those ketones gave the brain some energy so they could stay alert and hunt and kill. So in a short sentence, to answer your question, Ryan, ketosis is not a diet, it's a metabolic process. And that's the way that we focus on this amazing process that we're designed to tap into. I love it. hundred percent agree. It's a metabolic process. Now, talk to me a little bit about what are some of some benefits that someone would experience being in ketosis? Well, the number one, I, I believe, is the what it does for the mitochondria. And for those who don't, maybe you have like a those watching kind of like a biology basic understanding of the of mitochondria, which we've learned that it's this energy factory that produces energy, which is true. But the mitochondria also kind of act like a surveillance system to identify stressors. And if there's too much stress, it lowers energy production. That's where symptoms occur. So there's a lot of diseases out there that are linked to mitochondrial dysfunction. I think it's safe to say that the, the, the poorer that your mitochondria are functioning, the faster you're aging. So the name of the game is to support the mitochondria because when it produces more energy, you feel better. So that's where keto comes into play. Ketones, we know they communicate with the mitochondria and it tells the mitochondria to make more, to reproduce. Uh, it's called mitogenesis, which simply means the creation of new mitochondria. So you have a situation when you're in this metabolic process of ketosis, the mitochondria are reproducing and it's creating more energy. More energy means you feel good. But here's the, I would say, side effect of this. It raises your basal metabolic rate, meaning you burn more calories without having to track calories, which is very important because it's raising that basal metabolic rate as you produce more energy. So to me, that is the main benefit. And there's a whole host of other things that come with that because the brain has the most mitochondria. So think about what it does for mental clarity and performance and how it helps get rid of brain fog. I mean, for those of you doing this uh, fast with the ketones, you're probably noticing that right now. And then what it does for the heart, all these areas that are loaded with mitochondria, but that's my favorite benefit of ketosis. I love that. And everyone remembers from like their eighth grade science class, right? Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's where we make all of our energy. And guess what? Like you said, as we get older, that declines. And unfortunately, due to things going on in the environment, all these processed foods, it's declining more rapidly than ever. So ketosis kind of not only helps buffer that, but could actually increase mitochondrial function and the number of mitochondria. And that is a beautiful benefit of ketosis that helps with increased mental clarity, body improved body composition, fat loss, muscle gain, all of these other side effects, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. of just improved mitochondria. That's 100% true. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it, you get about 400% more energy from a body that's in this ketosis, uh, fat burning metabolic state versus burning sugar, which is super cool. It's like if you, you're able to do that, and to Ryan's point, I, I read a study that the average uh, person in America by age 70 has lost about 70% of their mitochondrial function, which is crazy. But if you're doing, you know, what we're talking about here, that doesn't, you don't have to be one of those statistics or things we can do about it. That's incredible. Imagine how far advanced we are with like electric cars and where we were at when we were like only diesel, right? Real rusty, not very efficient. And now we have electric cars we have that fuel source, just most people don't tap into that. That's ketosis, very efficient, very clean fuel versus glucose and carbohydrates. A lot of those are the nasty diesel fuel just to paint that picture for people. It's so true. We have this like superpower that we don't use. Um, and babies are born into this world, actually, who are babies that are breastfed are actually, they go in and out of ketosis. Burning fat is our prim uh, primal birthright. There's nothing new about it. To Ryan's point, we have this incredible option to burn fat and use this metabolic process, but the majority of Americans don't even know about it, or they think it's some sort of fad diet. Well, that, that's far from the truth.
A hundred percent agreed. Now let's let's shift into intermittent fasting because it's this huge trend right now. Everyone's talking about intermittent fasting, like it's it's something new, and but it's been around, right? It's kind of like what our ancestors feast and yeah. famine. But simply, how would you define what is intermittent fasting? Yeah, and, and Ryan, you're right. It's been around just like ketosis since uh, humans have existed. These are these are called ancient healing strategies, as, as I call them, because ancient meaning they've been around for a long time, and they have stood the test of time. They're healing strategies that have worked. There's nothing new about it. It's just a little nuanced or maybe new to people. But fasting has exploded, which is very interesting, Ryan, because I remember in 2013, 2014, when I started to get into fasting, I remember putting like a Facebook post, like doing a 16 hour fast today. And I would get so much hate from people, my Facebook friends saying, you're promoting like anorexia, you're doing all these, your starvation mode. And now you could post that and people were like, yeah, me too. I love fasting. So it's it come a long way, but intermittent fasting is essentially having a time where you're allowing your body to go into this repair mode. You're allowing your body to kind of reset. I, re I really believe that intermittent fasting is nature's reset button because the opposite is true. If you're going to eat every two to three hours, like the average American, it's one of the quickest ways to age yourself faster. If you're in a constant fed state, it challenges your digestive system. It challenges the resources in your body to work on processing that meal, and it'll age you faster. That is the truth. But with intermittent fasting, now you have a situation, let's say it's 16 or 18 hours in a fasted state, meaning you're not having food, you're just having your exogenous ketones, maybe some water and coffee. You have all this energy and resources and bandwidth that would have been used for the grazing that the average person does all day, but now it's being diverted. You have blood flow being diverted to the brain. You have these hormones that are increased, like human growth hormone, and testosterone. So intermittent fasting is simply having an eating window and then a window where you're allowing your body to fast. And that's where the amazing benefits come from, the balance of both. Incredible. And talk a little bit about some of those benefits. Like what benefits come from intermittent fasting? Well, we're, we're all 70 trillion cells inside of the body are genetically hardwired for fasting. Uh, Ryan, you talk about this all the time. In this day and age, we're in a constant fed state and 88% of American adults at the very minimum are metabolically challenged. They have, so, they have some form of insulin resistance or the, which leads to diabetes. So when we think about fasting, it's one of the best ways to lower the hormone insulin. And insulin in itself, it's not a bad hormone. It probably has a bad PR team. I think you would agree, Ryan, because people hate insulin, but insulin is very important for survival. But the problem is that most people have chronically high levels of insulin. So if you're not familiar with insulin, it is a, a hormone that stores energy, stores fat and other energy. And when that's elevated, you're going to be storing fat. It's going to be leading to problems. So with fasting and ketosis, they go hand in hand to lower insulin and an amazing process happens when you lower insulin. You have these hormones that run counter to insulin. They're called counter-regulatory hormones. So I mentioned a few, human growth hormone, glucagon, testosterone, a few others, the, the cortisol, but in the right amount. So when insulin drops during a fast, your body is hardwired for the old school. So it thinks we're going through a famine. It doesn't know about Uber Eats or DoorDash or the your supermarket it automatically goes into this process in a fasted state and it pumps you full of energy so you're alert and focused. Why? Because it thinks you're going through a famine and it wants you to go hunt and kill in order to stay alive, but you're just going to use it to feel good. And that's, I'm sure many of the people in this group that are doing this challenge are experiencing the, the, the counter regulatory hormone. So what it does for your energy and focus is tremendous. Incredible. And we, we live in an environment now where studies show on average, most people only fast nine hours a day, which is crazy, right? So say they're sleeping eight hours a day, they're basically eating from the time they get up to the time uh, they go, they are basically hitting the pillow Wild. all day long. Um, so what are, why do you think that is? Why do you think people are just chronically hungry and how do you combat that, right? What are some of the things that you can ease someone into an intermittent fast with? Well, ketosis is is a big tool for that, right? We know, um, Ryan, you you put out a lot of content showing what ketones can do to suppress appetite, um, what it does to just help you feel full and satiated. And that will work in the exogenous ketone sense, but it'll also work in the endogenous. So for those who don't know the difference, endogenous ketones is having your body, your liver produce the ketones from fat burning. 
And then exogenous, of course, is drinking a high quality like privet uh, supplement. So what happens is it's very satiating. Um, so it prevents the person from wanting to snack all day, but it also helps regulate the glucose and insulin level. So to your point, Ryan, the people that are just fasting for nine hours, which I wouldn't even consider intermittent fasting, um, they have a roller coaster of, of glucose and insulin levels, and it's really not their fault. They eat something, and it's usually a processed high-carbohydrate food, whether it's a snack or a meal. They get this surge in glucose and insulin, and then you know what happens. There's a, there's a steep drop, and now the brain lowers in glucose too fast, and it sends the body in 10 signals to find more food, find more carbs. So you have this roller coaster. You got to eat something, short energy, you crash. Eat something, short energy, you crash. But with ketosis and fasting, your glucose and insulin levels are steady, and you're burning fat, you feel good, and that's why you don't feel like you need to snack all day. I love it. And how how do you typically ease someone into a fast? Or and and what do you say mm. to the people that go, Ben? You know, I, I'm just going to be hungry. I usually wake up in the morning and I have something to eat, and I I need to have something to eat, or else I'm going to lose muscle, and I'm I'm just going to whittle away. What's going to that's that's the thought going on in their mind. How do you deal with that person and maybe ease them in or explain to them, nope, you'll be fine. You can make it till 12, 11 or 12. <laughs> you'll be okay. Well, I mean, I'll let you cover the muscle thing because you've done more research on that than I will, but I'll address the, how do you start it, right? Intermittent fasting is like a, is like a muscle, no, you know, pun intended there. It is like a muscle. So if you're one of those people that is fasting for only nine hours, let's start off with a 12 hour fast. And here's how that would work. You're done eating by 7 PM. You finish your last bite of food and then you do your nighttime routine. You go to bed and you wait until 7 AM until you have that first bite of food. That is a 12 hour fast. And you're going to feel great, especially with your ketones that you're taking. And you're going to say, all right, now I'm going to push my, either my 7 AM breakfast to 8 AM or your 7 PM dinner to 6 PM. Either way it works. You could bring down the dinner or increase the uh, breakfast time. And then you go to a 13 hour fast and that feels good. And then you go to a 14 to 15 and 16, et cetera. But I would say this, there's so many myths around fasting. And I always share a very extreme example to people to put things in perspective. And here's the extreme example. The Guinness world record for the longest fast is 382 days. Okay. This guy was obese. He had a lot of food energy and you went on a medically supervised fast. That's very important for 382 days. He had water, tea, multivitamin, tr nutritional yeast, but that's extreme. And he was fine. His blood work looked great. Electrolytes look great. So it's okay to skip a meal. It's okay to fast for a day. You have calories on your body, food energy that will be used and you, you have nothing to worry about. Now for the muscle thing, Ryan, you could take that part. Yeah. And you, you already mentioned in terms of like the power of ketosis, ketones are muscle sparing. So a lot of times people just think, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose muscle because that's what I was told that carbohydrates do. I need to just constantly be in this fed state. When in actuality, you talk about one of the benefits of intermittent fasting to increase growth hormone, which mm -hmm. has a lot of benefits, but also just ketones themselves spare muscle tissue. We see that it basically prevents some of the important amino acids that help build muscle from breaking down and ketones themselves actually can turn on that switch. We call it muscle protein synthesis, but it's basically like a light switch that basically turns on muscle building. So there's other ways to build muscle. So uh, people just don't whittle away and you lose all of your muscle. If you skip a meal, uh, actually it could, it could actually help, uh, especially if you're focusing on high quality food within the eating window. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something I want to want to ask you about when you, when you talk about now inside of the eating window, um, how do you, how do you recommend prioritizing protein? Cause I know that's a big thing to help with satiety and satiation outside of the eating window. But like when you structure your meal, say you're doing a 16, eight, um, meaning 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating, What's your typical? Do you do like two meals, three meals? And then and then how do you structure protein around that? Yeah, so the general recommendation that I give my students is to consume one gram of protein per pound of their ideal body weight. So if let's say uh, a woman named Mary weighs 180 pounds, but her goal weight is to get to 135 pounds, then I would advise Mary to consume 135 grams of protein every day within that window. Now, I, I think it's important to distinguish that there are different types of protein. There's plant-based protein, there's animal-based protein, and those are very different. Uh, the bioavailability is very different. Plant-based protein is not complete. It doesn't have all the amino acids needed to be a complete protein. There are some products that put together different plant-based proteins that make incomplete, 
but there is also these anti-nutrients uh, in plant proteins that kind of bind a lot of the benefits in there. Now, I'm not against plant-based based proteins, but I'm going to say that animal-based protein is going to be bioavailable. So that would be ideal. But if not, if you don't do animal-based protein, you can still make it work. I'm just making the point here. So I would have, depending on how tough it is to get in that protein, I would go to two meals or three meals. I don't think it really matters. I do think it matters with just having that window and getting in enough protein, whether that means three meals and a snack in between is fine. But as long as it's in that, if it's in that window, I'm okay with that. If you're having challenges getting enough protein in that window, then you could supplement with amino acids, a high quality amino acids to give you the building blocks, or you could take like a high quality protein shake to supplement with it. I don't expect Mary in this example to hit that protein threshold every day. I think it's okay to have some days when you're in a protein deficit because your body will get rid of damaged protein. But for the most part, four days out of the week, I want Mary to hit that protein goal. And we would figure out how many meals she should have in order to get that. I, I don't know what your thoughts are on the protein thing, but that's what I teach. No, I love it. Uh, and it's great because Prove It actually inside of their keto net has fermented leucine in it. So it oh. adds leucine to it. And then on top of that, a protein that has more amino acids in it, including <laughs> leucine. So it's I didn't even on. know that. That's perfect. Yeah. Sa same thing. Um What's your typical, like, I know, what's your typical schedule? Do you do a 16-8? Do you do, what, what do you typically do during the week? I usually do an 18-6 most, most days. When I travel, I'll throw in like a 24-hour fast or a 36-hour fast. That's the benefit of being metabolically flexible. You know this, Ryan. It's like when you're at an airport, there's a whole bunch of toxic food. I never eat on airplanes. Uh, the, steward, the, uh, air, um, the airline attendant they love me because I'm just like, I'm good. I have my water, my electrolytes, maybe my exogenous ketones. I don't need food. I don't need anything. So I would say 18, six, most days I'll throw in a 24 hour fast here and there. I've done a five day water fast, um, a couple of times as well, but 18, six is my go-to. I, I am a big believer of mixing up the schedule, just like great fitness routines. You always mix things up. I think that's important with fasting. I've been seeing a lot of research on eating breakfast and skipping dinner, uh, so early time restricted feeding, and I don't like that because personally I like to skip breakfast and, and eat later on. So that I usually eat between like 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. or 2 p or excuse me 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. is usually like my back and forth window. I love it, and you touched on something that's super important. So there is there's flexibility in that window. So I think some people I'm with you. Like I delay my breakfast. I usually start eating around 12 usually wrap up by about six. Um, that's usually my my window. But if someone's like, I am a breakfast person, I love a good omelet, and I don't really love dinner, you could shift that window. And that's perfectly fine. But to your point, it's like finding that that window that works best for you. Uh, exactly. It, it, and it is good to be flexible. And the cool thing about fasting is that it plugs into any nutritional uh, philosophy you follow, you could follow any dietary plan, and you could plug fasting right into it. it's very flexible. I love that. I say intermittent fasting is diet agnostic. It doesn't care what exactly. diet yeah. works. <laughs> I love so, that. Last two questions. This has been incredible, Ben. Last two questions is when do you strategically utilize ketones? So you mentioned like when you're flying, sometimes you'll take some exogenous ketones. Are there any other times that you use them throughout your day or week or yeah. month? I, I, there's a very, uh, there's a time and place for exogenous ketones that I personally use strategically. And then for my students, we use them all the time. So for me, like today, for example, today is a very um, mentally demanding day. I have this, and then I have three consecutive um, like podcast interviews after this. So this is a day where I want to give my brain some additional support uh, in the sense of exogenous ketones. So I'm going to be drinking exogenous ketones today. When I travel, I do like the idea of taking exogenous ketones as a way to help with inflammation and any of the radiation I might be exposed to when I travel and then I use it with students who are having a hard time producing ketones endogenously. They might be like insulin resistant. Their metabolism is just not there yet. And it's been 14, 21 days. We changed their diet, but they're still having trouble. They're still not feeling that well. We'll get them on some exogenous ketones to help kind of bridge that gap until we get their body producing it. And then lastly, I use it a lot when I play basketball in a fasted state. And every Sunday I play a two or three hours of basketball here in Miami and when I don't use it, I might like bonk a little bit, but I chug some uh, exogenous ketones and it helps me get through the, the fasted workouts, especially basketball. 
Incredible. Uh, and last thing I want to ask you is a lot of people who are listening to this, this may be their first time doing this iFast with ketones. They might be jumpstarting their first five days where it's like, hey, I'm going to use ketones strategically to help me get in that intermittent fasting, eat that six to eight hour eating window, and just, just hammer it for the next five days. On top of exogenous ketones and condensing the eating window, what are three other things that you would you would recommend for people? And it can be in general to just optimize their health in terms of just maybe just movement. What other things do you have to kind of help them with that intermittent fasting or just optimizing health? Yeah. So, okay. Three, we'll, we'll rattle them off. Number one, don't forget the fundamentals of health. Ryan talks about this all the time on his social media cha uh, channel. So sleep and movement, I'll put into that category. So make sure you're getting quality sleep. Your body goes through amazing processes and make sure you're moving your body. That could be a workout or it could be steps, whatever your activity level is. So that's the first tip. Focus on the fundamentals and everything else upgrades by default. Number two, um, this is something that this tribe is already doing, but you become your environment. Your environment determines your thoughts, your thoughts determine your actions, and your actions determine your results. So find a tribe, and you already have found it with this group. Stick with your tribe because you're going to have friends tell you that ketosis is dangerous or fasting is going to put you in starvation mode. And if you're not with a tribe that supports you, it's going to be hard to sustain this lifestyle. And the third tip, which I believe is the most important one here, it's a supplement that I recommend everybody add to their exogenous ketone um, supplementation list, which is uh, I call vitamin G. And Ryan knows where I'm going with this. Vitamin G has been proven to be fat burning, uh, anti-inflammatory. It helps you feel good as soon as you take it. Dr. Joe Dispenza has seen brain scans and amazing things happen instantaneously when individuals take vitamin G. You can't get it on Prove It's website or you can't get it at the supplement store because it's a practice of gratitude. What you appreciate, appreciate. So have a gratitude practice that you don't treat like a checklist, but you feel that gratitude and what it will do for your health and your healing journey. Amazing. Thank you so much, brother. This has been an incredible conversation. I think there's so much to unpack and, and so many gems in here for people to take away and feel empowered to go into their iFast to improve their overall health and longevity. Last question is, is where can people, how can we support you? Um, obviously, Keto Flex, an incredible resource. Where can people find you? How else can we support you? Yeah, it's an honor. Thank you, Brian, for having me here. I love what you all are doing. It's uh, cool to be a part of this. Uh, finally, we made it happen, right? Uh, ketoflexbook.com is where you get the book. Ryan endorsed it. His, he's, in the, he's in the book right there. And then uh, my uh, podcast is called the Keto Camp Podcast, Camp with the K. You can see it behind me. Same thing on YouTube. And I'd love to connect with y'all if uh, this resonated with you. Amazing, brother. Thank you so much. You are an incredible human being, a breath of knowledge. And we all appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Ryan. Thank you, brother. Have a great day.